Hi, it's Slade Walters teaching you how to debone a turkey. First, we're going to take out the sack o' guts. Actually, this is the turkey neck, which is Cousin Eddie's favorite. Yes. Gobble, gobble. Okay. Put it in the water. Now, we're going to use this water for stock. All the bones and all the pieces parts that we cut off this turkey or take out of these lovely plastic bags we're going to put in the stock with the exception of the liver because I don't like turkey livers. Now maybe you like them, me no likey. So we'll set those just on the side for a moment. Oh, the gizzard. Gizzards are good. They go in the water. And the heart, always good. Okay, you're gonna need some heavy duty kitchen shears. These are not heavy-duty kitchen shears, but they're all I had. And a really sharp knife. A boning knife would be good. I don't think this is actually a boning knife, but it's really sharp, so it'll work. Alrighty. Now you dig in and cut out the backbone. Now this takes a little muscle, and uh, that's why you want the heavy-duty kitchen shears. Uh, you can use a knife, but it doesn't do a great job. I uh, actually broke a knife trying to do this another time. Kitchen shears seem to snap through the bones in the back the best. This will take a little bit of time and effort, but it's well worth it. And the backbone is great for stock, so don't throw this away. Put it in the stock pot. More shearing and cutting. Okay, now I'm snapping the leg joints out of the leg sockets. The cracking sounds you will hear while you're doing this are means that you're doing it right. So just, uh, yeah, once you get it all the backbone out and put it in the stock and you get it all open, you can see the total inside. And this is kind of gross looking, but uh, what you want to do here is remove the breastplate and ribs and all the little pieces parts that are inside here. And this is an, just a little bit of time action. You just cut ever so gent gently and peel this, the uh, good meat away from the breastplate like I'm doing here. And uh, I am not a pro at this. I am have not been properly trained on how to do this. I'm sure there's a better way to do it. And I'm sure I'll get 10,000 comments about how I'm screwing it up. Here's some more cracking of bone required. I'm snapping the leg joint out of the, uh, the wing area so that I can get the uh, the wing joint actually, get, so I can get the uh, breastplate out, the breastbone out. And as I said, I'm just slicing the meat away, trying not to cut through the skin in the back, um, or actually on the breast, and trying not to cut through, really hurt the meat at all. I'll just snap the uh, wing joint out again, and you just a little help with the knife to get it around there. All right. Yep. So this will take a long time. This is actually sped up. Believe it or not, it took me quite a while to do this. Now, I've, I know there's guys who can do this much, much faster, but as I said, I think this is the second time I've ever deboned a turkey. And uh, anyway, you might be better than, at this than me, but you know what? It's really cool to do this because I have a little Korean oven. I currently live in uh, the Republic of Korea or South Korea, and uh, they don't have big old American style ovens here. They have little, small, ovens that are way different. So in order to get a turkey to fit in this oven, I had to debone it. There's the breastplate. It's all big and and I'll put it in my stock pot. This also great for stock. Don't throw this stuff away. You'll want to use it. And now it's Mr. Floppy Bird. Would you call a spineless turkey a chicken? Bad joke, sorry. Okay, what I'm doing now is taking out the thigh bone and uh, this just a little bit at a time. You peel the meat away from the thigh bone. Of course, put it in the stock. Do the other side. I'm leaving the um, lower leg bones in just for presentation so it looks more like a real bird when it's in the pan. Um, but it, what's really great about this is when you carve the turkey to eat it, if you carve out the off the legs, then the whole rest of the bird, everything else is just boneless and you can just make a really nice perfect slices out of it and it just it's really great so this is a stock pot you want to simmer this low and slow for a really long time you don't want to bring it to a boil too fast because if you do you won't get the gelatin from the bones oh and you must clean your space when you're working with poultry it gets really dirty and nasty okay now we have the inside of the bird and it's time to season it I use 
Tony Sachery's Creole seasoning because it tastes good on just about everything. And uh, don't be afraid to get your hands totally filthy and dirty and turkey-ish covered in gook because you're gonna. Um, yeah, oh yeah, don't touch the dirty thing with that. Okay. So I spread the seasoning around liberally. Yes, and uh, I use a little garlic powder too, also. And then I, I like this uh, I, this uh, black pepper I got in Japan. It's really finely ground. Kosho. I, I can't read the kanji. Sorry. Ah, Morton kosher salt. Best part of anything is the salt, and I use kosher because it's it's kosher, dude. All right, season it. Now it's time for the stuffing. Let the stuffing commence. Okay, to do start the stuffing, I chopped uh, about a half of a big onion, or use a whole small onion, yellow onion, white onion, whatever onion floats your boat. About three to four stalks of washed, cleaned celery. Throw it in there. I'm sweating it in a pan with some butter. Don't really saute, but all, you know, kind of a fast sweat if there is such a thing. Put in some mushrooms, because I like the way they taste, so. Ah yes, Herb Season Stuffing by Pepperidge Farm. Just one bag of this will do the trick. Now instead of using water, like it says in the directions, I use chicken broth, but you could also use, if you did this in advance, you could use the turkey stock you make, and it would be even better. Bring it to a nice rolling boil, stir it around a little bit, and then dump in the stuffing. Dude, dump in the stuffing. Dump in the stuffing now. Dump in the stuffing. Oh, yeah, okay, there we go. I'm dumping in the stuffing. And stirring it. Now, I'm sure there's a better, more professional way to do this, but I use the dump and stir method, as you can see. Now, I didn't shoot myself actually stuffing the bird because I'm a dummy and I forgot. But what you want to do is just make a mound of stuffing in the middle of the baking pan you're going to use to bake the turkey in. And then like I'm doing here, just kind of wrap the turkey around the stuffing. The stuffing will make the bird look kind of bird-like, kind of like an actual turkey. Now I use canola oil to coat the outside of the skin. It makes the skin nice and golden brown. It keeps the juices in. And canola oil is good because it can take high temperature without smoking. If you use something like olive oil or some other oil, it could smoke at this because we're gonna cook this really hot now I, I season the outside with Creole seasoning you can use whatever you like pepper salt whatever I just like the Creole seasoning so I'm gonna put that on and uh, not too much just enough to give it a nice little coating and pop it in the oven now this is gonna cook really fast and really hot I use a thermometer I can stick in and leave in during the, near the end of cooking so it'll it'll tell me when it's hot enough and there it is, voila, the boneless turkey.